What happens when you take the literary aspect of world building and make it a literal and fundamental component of gameplay? You get the 4X genre. 4X is the explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate style of gameplay. Now, over the years, this formula has almost been completely followed to create a strategy subgenre, which is akin to uh, chess with faces, I guess, where the gameplay is the journey, it is the story, with caricatures of historical figures or alien opponents that give you a loose association of what you're doing, and they modify the standard gameplay mechanics to facilitate their predisposition of bonuses or penalties to things like production or commerce or diplomacy. So, how do you put a story in a strategy game which doesn't necessarily need any well, why would you? I mostly remember characters and faces more than I do really good chess moves I did long ago. Well, I do remember when my phalanx defended against a battleship. That was kind of cool. What I'm saying is things with meaning have lasting value. Drama has lasting value. How you felt at a certain time. And we want our games to have a story and have good stories at that, but never at the expense of the gaming experience. So one of my favorite games is being... Sid Meier's Office and Torrance in my top three. And along with this expansion that comes with the Alien Crossfire, it's a combination of human philosophies or factions with various alien ones, and they accommodate different philosophical ways of thinking, and thus living and being in conflict with each other over real estate. You are colony building. So for Smack Ack, the caricatures would pop up on your world building journey uh, randomly telling you their philosophy after a certain normal or a special building was built or a new science or tech was discovered. Even if that caricature's colony was destroyed and they themselves were put in prison, they'd still have a philosophical or meaningful thing to say about ethics or, or aesthetics, the empirical world, or even the divine one. Now their philosophy and voice, the voice acting at least, was along the journey with you even if they themselves and their culture were destroyed. They had profound and meaningful things to say about your actions in what you did. Sometimes even just a little cutscene was all it took for the uh, special buildings to make you feel like you've accomplished something. Now, this all culminated into a uh, science fiction-like singularity event where one creates a, I don't know, a cybernetic group consciousness or the alien planet you're on actually eats you alive. Now, what would make these caricatures or these cardboard cutouts of philosophy actual characters? Well, of course, you'd first need a storyline. In the most recent 4X game I played called Endless Space 2, it's a very polished and high production value game. They try to do this through various optional faction subquest lines. Now, because their factions aren't based around philosophy or the leaders or the main renderings of those factions, whatever they are, uh, they come across as nameless. They're sort of lifeless representations with even some very strange, faceless, shoddy voice acting, if you want. But we refuse his lies and reject his accusations. You know, things get a little disconnected. I don't know the names of any of these guys, and I actually don't really care for any of them. Okay, except for Horatio. You can never forget that face. For example, here's generic science group alien guys. Here's generic imperialistic human group. Uh, here are the magical tree people, uh, the cybernetic killing machines. Uh, none of these really resonate with me very well. That's not to say the game is bad in any way. The factions just don't have the impact because these are not characters. That's not to say some aren't very creative, like the Riftborn or Horatio, in fact, the Horatio subquest could have been quite compelling as the clones try and figure out who's who and maybe who the player character is in all of this. That would be interesting, but that never even gets that far, nor is the storyline even necessary. But I can still remember uh, the quote from Colonel Santiago's, there's her speech about babies whenever you build a children's crush because it's a Spartan military leader talking about the importance of having a nursery in your space colony. And she's not even a character. Proper care and education for our children remains a cornerstone of our entire colonization effort. So these optional faction storyline quests that ES2 provides aren't voice acted to my knowledge, and they always seem to be in the way of the various victory conditions, which is kind of sad as the rest of the game is beautiful. I mean, there's, uh, there's custom music for each uh, faction, you have unique building methods, 
uh, customizable ships with classes. And there's even mod support if you want to go that far. It's a really cool game. And each faction modifies the gameplay in a certain way, which makes them all feel unique. So it's more unique than any other 4X game I've played. Now, there's even a faction of, of xenophobic virtual immortal. Let me get see if I get this right. Xenophobic virtual immortal vampiric mind controlling religious crusading saints who are seeking ascension that are looking for some heretic to destroy. But you never have to find him. And I never could because I was too busy trying to survive, let alone get to the point in that side quest to capture some planet that was already taken and out of the way. I mean, you sort of feel like you're on a crusade due to the, the media surrounding that faction, their choir singing music, uh, your mind controlling lesser species. There's massively powerful arc ships you get. But I don't feel that way from the story itself. Uh, not from this thing. Is it a character? I don't even know who she is, if it even is a she, if this species can have males and females. I don't know. And that's in part of the problem. If the storyline was voice acted, for example, if it was more strongly imposed on the player to follow, not necessarily enforced because you want freedom to do what you need to, but given proper incentive and then having negative reinforcement so that you get a lot of negatives if you don't do this quest line, then ES2 could possibly be the first Forex game that properly associates a caricature as a character and having optional storylines within this experience. So there's one potential solution to not hinder the 4X gaming experience. It's still grant characters the ability to become characters or caricatures to become characters and grant them some humanity. So you have to focus on the faction-based goals and subquests, giving them a plot line, giving them choices. So if the leaders or faction people in charge, the player character avatar, give them a voice. Make Horatio great again. Give them a dramatic arc within that subquest, and then tie it in with the choice systems that are already there in the other things that pop up randomly. That would make Endless Space 2 a fantastic game experience with a corresponding optional storyline. That's just my take on it. What do you think would be the best way to involve a better and clearer story or storytelling or characters or plots within your 4X gaming experience?